Hey everyone, this is Digital Charcuterie. I'm James. This is Rob. Give us a like, give us a subscribe. What we do on this channel is we have conversations about movies that we like and that we don't like, but mostly we try to stick it to stuff that we like because, you know, who has the energy to hate? Most people on YouTube. But anyway, Rob, thanks for joining me today. Great to be here, man. Great to be here. You've seen the Batman 795,000 times right now. Uh, no, you've seen it three times in the theater, which is awesome. I've seen it the one time. I absolutely loved it. You seem to really enjoy I mean, you've seen it three times. I'm hoping you enjoy going to see a movie <laughs> three times. It's three hours long. If you if you go see this movie more than once and you don't like it, then there's we have to talk. But I'm sure you you like the, the Batman a little bit at least. And you can also watch our spoiler review of this movie that we did a week ago. We're going to have to have another spoiler discussion on the channel, though, Rob, after like the dust has settled a little bit and have like a full post um, like just talk about the Batman totally spoilerific after seeing it multiple times because obviously things change points change views change and stuff like that let's get right into it though this movie leaves uh I guess the door open for a sequel as Robert Pattinson kind of alluded to months ago he said you know they always you know this is a self-contained story but leads itself open to a sequel got spoilers for the Batman if you have not seen the Batman we'll let you go in three two one. All right. So anyway, Gotham City is submerged underwater. Just like Riddler's plan goes through. It succeeds. That aside, Matt Reeves is, you know, doing the press tour right now. He's talking about the Arkham Asylum show, how that used to be GCPD, but now it's turned into this Arkham show. Mm -hmm. And he's also talked a lot about, you brought this up, Mr. Freeze potentially being in the sequel, Hush potentially being in the sequel. And people have been asking him, of course, about Robin, because whenever there's a Batman, you got to talk about Robin. And no filmmaker, Rob, ever seems to want to touch Robin, except for Joel Schumacher. No one really wants to touch that. Tim Burton came close, but but no, they just don't want to get there. Pattinson said that it has to be a kid, but Matt Reeves has said Rob, and you're a huge Nightwing fan. I got to preface this by saying that you are a massive Nightwing fan. So any Robin could lead to a potential Nightwing. I don't know if we'd get that in here, but I mean, it, it, you know, Catwoman going to Blue Day, Blood Heaven is, is kind of gets you to where you need to go for that. But I don't think we'll get him in here. But getting to Robin, he mentions Robin. And, and the one element that he spoke about that kind of kind of led me down the path, path of possibilities. And I still think that the, the sequel script is too, it's way too early to know for sure but i think the one thing he said that took me down that path was he said you know for it to work the stakes have to be high and for the movie to work the stakes have to be high and how much higher can the stakes be when you've got the boy wonder like a kid with batman um well yeah i mean that, that, that's one way i guess that you can uh put, put, put the stakes up like you know the people people uh like like to you know we, we talked about on our spoiler talk about like who uh characters in that appeared in this movie that could have been um, could be robin down the road whether it's mm -hmm. the little th the thug at the beginning or you know the mayor's uh, the mayor's kid i mean uh, th those are two definite options and yeah there are a lot of ways that they can bring up the stakes in some type of way it's just yeah w will robin be in this i mean you mentioned nightwing and stuff like that i'm almost picturing like you know nightwings uh really really far away down the road with uh with, yeah. with, with this uh, with this uh uh, version of Batman concerning where we are. I think we're more likely to get, you know, Nightwing when I think you and I talked about it, about so something like Batgirl, there could be an introduction there, mm -hmm. or, you know, Chris McKay always has uh, had this um, uh, movie seemingly, seemingly of Nightwing that he's been constantly, you know, developing. It seems like that he's been developing that movie for like five years now for at this point. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. And, and still no, still no news, but you know, um, yeah, I don't know. There could be a Robin. I mean, young Robin, whether it is, it's just nice to hear that Matt Reeves is like, oh, I'm open to it type of thing. It's like, you know, uh, Christopher Nolan can throw in his uh, his uh, uh, cameo with uh, George Gordon-Levitt and, you know, um, Zack Snyder can throw in his bloody uh, uh, yeah. Robin costume and stuff like that. But no one seems to be full on uh, invested to doing that story on screen so far. But, you know, it's cool to hear that Matt Reeves is open to it. I like what I, you mentioned the Dark Knight Rises and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And I actually really liked that portrayal in that universe. That's not Robin. I mean, they call him Robin yeah. at the end. But I did. I love that's for me. It's just uh, a wink, right? right? Yeah, mostly. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It is what it is. And he's, he, he kind of is like his sidekick throughout that movie. So it was a nice little nod. And I appreciated it. And in the Nolan uh, ultra realistic world that makes a lot of sense to me that's fine i was and i really loved it and i think for me right now the dark knight rises ending sequence 
is it could be one of my favorites in movies and definitely in Batman. Like it's up there. It might beat this one. It might not. I don't know. It's just there's something about it with the music and when he enters, like when he enters the Batcave in that movie and the music is lifting and he goes, like that's just such a great moment. I was it's just in the theater. I remember like this is fantastic. So I love that. Um, I like, but 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 in this world that that doesn't work. You got to have Rob. If you're gonna have Robin in it, you got to bring in Dick Grayson or or Jason. You got to bring somebody in a Robin in. Um, I don't. How do you feel? Does it have to be Dick Grayson for you to be Robin, or could they just, you know, push Dick Grayson off to the side because and maybe go with Jason Todd or or somebody else? I mean, it doesn't have to be. I mean, I I think that's you know the OG, the real one that you know uh, majority of people want to see, and it's the one that I would want to see mostly. But you know, for all I know, like they could even uh, subvert all those and go to the Dark Knight Returns route, and suddenly Carrie Kelly, right? Like you know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah they, they, they they could totally go that route as well. So, um, I mean, they didn't really hint at anything like that, like a female Robin or anything like that. There was no no character that could hint you that, that way. But it could go, like, you know, multiple different ways. But if it's, like, it's, if it turns out being Carrie Kelly and it's a little girl, then, you know, that might give us some, uh, like, hit girl vibes a little bit at that point from uh, Kick-Ass. Depending on how they, they go about it, I, I, I'm really intrigued to see where the sequel goes. I mean, you know, this is... We talked a little bit about it in another video, but this is kind of grounded. It's dark. It's gritty. I think it's a lot. It's a little bit more hopeful than a lot of people give it credit for. I really think, like it, the whole thing, it's kind of like, oh my god, despair, despair, and then poof, Batman becomes Batman, and the, and I just feel like it was the most optimistic ending that we've had since the Dark Knight Rises and Joseph Gordon Levitt getting levitated up into the Batcave. I I love it, uh, but it's ultra realistic. I don't know. I, I there's a part of me, Rob, that kind of thinks that these Batman movies. At some point, and I think Snyder might have been on the track. Well, he definitely was, but like maybe you gotta like and I love this movie. Don't get like nine point six out of ten I gave it yesterday the other day, and I gave Dark Knight a nine point five, Rob. How do you feel about those apples? But because <laughs> I said they were equal and then but to the for the debate, I just whatever. Mm. <laughs> point one. You committed anyway, to one side. <laughs> yeah, I, I committed by point one. But <laughs> but the the one thing that like Batman and look, it made a lot of money, obviously. But Spider-Man No Way Home made more money. And it's going to make more money. And the one thing that movie has that this movie doesn't have are kids and children. And it's a fun romp in the theater. This movie is, for me, it's a top, like, it's a film. Like, this is like, Martin Scorsese would say, this is cinema to this movie. Like, it's up there for me. I really liked it. But Batman isn't, it's not fantastical anymore. You know what I mean? But one thing that Matt Reeves keeps bringing in talking about is Mr. Freeze. He keeps alluding to Mr. Freeze. He seems to really want to deal with Mr. Freeze. He says he can make Mr. Freeze work in his grounded in reality universe. How do you feel about that? And how do you see Mr. Freeze playing into this? I mean, they could play Mr. Freeze in a lot of ways, like uh, whether he's, you know, just like, uh, uh, you know, talking about Riddler, you know, th this guy that was, you know, leaving riddles behind and, you know, murdering people and stuff like that. You can, easily do that type of thing we're not with a guy in a gigantic uh, uh outfit uh you know that keeps him cold all the time with a freeze gun yelling freeze uh, ice puns right you can literally do it by, by this guy just showing up to crime scenes and just um killing people and leaving them frozen in spots like you know a show that i love entirely is dexter and uh in that first in in that first season there was a a character known as ice truck killer i believe i believe that was the exact name of it and it's like that is like entirely a type of way that i could see them uh taking a uh uh, a Mr. Freeze in this type of Matt Reeves type of world. And, you know, uh, most people have like, you know, this indication as to, you know, the unrealistic uh, Batman villains, the ones that you can't do in a gritty, uh, realistic way are, you know, guys like Killer Croc and uh, Mr. Freeze and Clayface and stuff like that. But Matt Reeves is already throwing down the gauntlet saying like, you know, he, he, he could see a way that he could do a Mr. Freeze and that it could fit in with this world. Uh, gives me a lot of hope is it's just like, you know, I'd like to see like even what his take would be on a, a Clayface or, you know, uh, a, a Killer Croc, like how I said, or a man batter and stuff like that. But it's like, you know, the fact that he's already open to Mr. Freeze and seeing a way that he could do it uh, is, uh, is really cool because that just means that, you know, he could open up the door for all the rogues, rogues galleries in some type of way. Yeah. That's the thing is that you, you know, you, you start off with Riddler, Catwoman, Penguin, Falcone, like very down to earth villains, Joker. Mm -hmm. But then you mentioned Mr. Frieza and, but, and he uses that adrenaline at the end of the movie that everybody's like, it's some kind of venom. I think it's just an adrenaline rush that he gives himself, yeah. but you bring that in, you can slowly evolve. And the thing is, Matt Reeves just made two movies about apes taking over the, the world 
Like he made two movies about apes that felt real. And, and if you can do that, I think you can find ways to make like a clay face or man bat work within this world. I don't know if he's necessarily interested in that, but I think you can. And I think, I, I, you know, as great as this movie was as the, de- the detective noir thriller, what is the sequel? What do you, what do you take into the sequel? This one, you know, you got your Zodiacs, your Chinatowns, your sevens, all of that. What's the next one? Where does that one go? What's like, it's not going to be the exact same. It's going to be a little bit different. And the circumstances that we're left with at the end of that movie, it has to be different. And it almost feels like it's going to have to be a little bit more fantastical, but you have to, it has to evolve that way. It can't just be like all of a sudden, you know, there's an alien that shows up. There has to be like, it has to gradually get you to a place where you believe that that's going to happen in this movie. And I think where we are in this movie, I would, I honestly, in a sequel, I would buy, most of the rogue galley maybe you know like poison ivy might be a little difficult in some aspect like to do and i mean if you try i think the other thing to freeze versus ivy if you do ivy realistic that could just come off pretty cheap and cheesy and not very quality but mr freeze i think you could pull off uh, in quite a ways and so i'm really excited to see where they take that the other thing rob is he said that don't expect to see the joker again he said, no, this is, he just wanted you to know that the Joker is in there, that the Joker exists in this world already. He said, I wouldn't be surprised if the Joker doesn't spring up again. How did, how did, what did you think, make of those comments? Well, I mean, it's not a popular thing because people love the Joker and stuff like that. But however, <laughs> that's, do they? That's, uh, no. <laughs> and, and I mean, uh, speaking of a not a popular thing, that was the one thing that, you know, seeing it now three times, every time I'm almost liking that scene less and less. A little bit because not because you know it's 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 um you know i don't want to see you know riddler and joker team up and it's like not that joker's not a great character and stuff like that but it's like every time i'm watching it i'm loving and uh enjoying the the awesome takes that he, uh, Matt Reeves has on someone like Catwoman, someone like Riddler, someone like penguin someone you know th- th- that's done so well in this movie and s- seeing how well he did with those characters, especially somebody like Penguin, who's been, you know, even though he, he has so many Batman appearances, he's one of his big bads and stuff like that. People look down on so much and then people like so much in a movie like this, he's able to elevate the character this much. Um, I think I don't want to see him use Joker again and hearing him say that, you know, he's, he's not like looking at, uh, including Joker as a main villain and thing really makes me, uh, like that a lot like you know he could still do joker later down the road and stuff like that and it could be great but i want to see his take on more of the other villains i want to see i want to see you know uh his mr freeze take if he has that i want to see you know i mentioned man bat man bat could be easily done in a, a, the flyish type of way i don't want to see goldblum you know play him and stuff like that but you know somebody like that and and doing the body horror part of it because i think that could that could very much fit in very well with uh the style and you know the noir like maybe not the noir part of it in, in general but he could easily stylize it in a way that could very much fit in this world entirely so yeah <laughs> just, yeah you want you wonder if man bad is going to be included in the arkham show uh, you know he says it's going to be a horror and stuff maybe that's maybe they're going with that direction on the arkham show mm-hmm. i don't think it's too I, I i'm i don't know how i feel about the joker the joker scene um, so there was a second Joker scene where Batman kind of went to talk to him, which yeah. bragging rights I predicted that weeks ago, but uh, <laughs> I just kind of threw it out there and I decided to make it happen. <laughs> but um, I, I, the reason why he kept that scene, it was apparently in some of the test screenings, Matt Reeves actually took that scene out of the movie, the, the Riddler Joker scene out of the movie. And he found that the ending uh, worked better with it and test audiences gave it a higher score with that in it. And I, and I, when I watched the movie, when that scene ended and it went and it led into the next scene, that was my first thought. I was like, Oh, that scene is, is, is getting us ready for this scene. It's, it's like, you need that scene there. It doesn't necessarily have to be Joker per se that's in that scene, but that scene really felt necessary to me when I was watching the movie. And I'm glad that he did keep it in instead of cutting it out. Like they initially planned. I, w- I can't wait to see the Joker, uh, batman scene that they have it's looking like so if you go to what's this website called the 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 riddler's website the rata 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 it's right now rob as of this recording at 56 percent. so probably by the time this goes up it'll be like 58 percent or 60 percent. so it looks like in a few days something is coming on that channel on that website right now 
what are it going to be? Is it going to be that Joker scene? Is it going to be news on a show coming up? I don't think it's going to be any of the shows. I think there's still way too early. I think we're going to get the Joker scene coming up. I'm right a lot of. Right, a lot of ding dong. Maybe you're just be able to chat with uh, uh, Riddler on the thing. It's just, <laughs> it's it's just a live chat. A, a, it's, just live it's just Paul Dano. It's just Paul Dano sitting. It's just Paul Dano saying, "Hey guys, Paul Dano." Yeah. <laughs> you want to see me in a sequel? I'd love to be in a sequel. Let's do it. Uh, but anyway, that's where that is. So I, I love that scene. I, I don't, I don't mind that they won't be going back to the Joker. I think it's, you know, he, I would like that he still exists in there, and I like him to pop up, perhaps like he did in this one, just kind of like so he's still there, like. Even if it's a minor scene where the Riddler breaks out and he's like, let me out. And, you know, he runs away, whatever. Like just that he's still there. You know, I, I keep the continuity of that together. But again, you know, I talked to Andrew about this on Monday and there's a lot of Batman. Like, you know, everybody wants a shared universe, the MCU, the DCU, blah, blah, blah. But Batman is its own universe. There's enough characters in Batman that you don't need him to bleed into any other franchise. He is his own universe. And there's a million characters, villains that they have not, dabbled in at all in in live action that i think you could do justice and have a lot of fun with it's just they they for some reason they want to stick to these ones and i understand it like i understand but batman begins the riddler the the, the, the scarecrow and raz al ghul being the villain of that movie was kind of like that's that was ballsy when you think about it like the, the, they were like here's a couple of villains that you don't know and they threw them i mean comic book fans knew but you know the map the major the batman sells and so I, there's a lot of characters that they can use. They don't have to keep going to that well. But I, but within that thought, Rob, those characters exist in Batman. So they are there. They should be there. And they should be used to some capacity, even if it's just like this movie, a cameo. Well, yeah. And it's like when you talk about Batman Begins, like, you know, Scar Scarecrow is not a very well-known villain. And it's cool that they used him in, in, in that one. But it's like Ra's al Ghul, I think, just considering the story that they were trying to try and tell it's like Ra's al Ghul was a perfect fit for that especially when you were going to go into Batman's origins how he became Batman you know oh, yeah. uh, being trained and all that stuff like you know having him trained by the League of Shadows is just a, a great take on it a great a great choice for that movie and um yeah like uh you know I, I'm, I'm very curious because it's just in general it's like I wonder how you could possibly use the Riddler again without him being connected to the Joker now in the, in this one because it really sets up for a team up in some type of way. So I'm almost like if they're saying they're not going to use Joker again, but they might use Riddler, they got to have like you know a real good way as the way that they bring back bring back Riddler and not so much the Joker. I don't. I, yeah, you're right. I like the idea though that they don't team up and they're just bad guys and they kind of respect them wanting to to punish Gotham in some sort of way because you know that's essentially what Joker does is he punishes Gotham. And that's what the Riddler wants. Is Riddler believes Gotham needs to be punished. Let's talk about one final villain, the one that Matt Reeves has been talking even more about since his Mr. Freeze comments. And that is a word that is seen on the screen in this movie. And that is Hush. The mm -hmm. comic Hush. How familiar are you with that character and the comic and the storyline? I'm definitely familiar. I watched, I, I, I read the comic. I watched the animated movie that they released not too, not too long ago as well. Uh, that one's a little bit different uh, in terms of their take and the way that the story goes, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great comic in general. And, and one of the more recent, um, um, more recent meaning, you know, what, 15 years now, I think that from when that one, one came out. Um, a, a, one of the ones that's like definitely one of the more high profile ones in the art by Jim Lee is just awesome. I think his, his, his drawings of the Batman in that, in that comic are fantastic. Yeah. It's a great comic. How do you think the hush would fit into this world? Like, cause now it's, it's the, 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 like Gotham is Venice now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it fits in very easily because I think they almost set up for it. Right. Like, you know, setting yeah. up the, the Elliot, um, uh, I forgot what the, what, the, what his first name was uh, in, in in that one uh, in in the movie, but the uh, reporter Elliot uh, could very well be Tommy Thomas Elliot's uh, Tommy Elliot's uh, father, and you know if they go down that path and it's and it's um, that version of Hush, not like the one in the animated movie. Spoiler alert: it's not Tommy Elliot in the animated movie. Um, but uh, if they go down that path, they already have like a built-in storyline and reason for him to become Hush, like directly in this movie. Do you think they would they should stick to that or do or should they have some creative freedom and uh let him be somebody else just for shock value for the audience watching it? Well, I mean, 
it was it was cool the choice that they made there. But considering, you know, should we, should, should I mention spoilers as to yeah. what it is for that? Yeah, yeah spoilers one? for Hush. Spoilers for, for the, for the animated for one and stuff like that. I mean, in that one, it's not Tommy Elliot. It turns out that it's actually the Riddler. The Riddler is Hush in that one, and he has a he has the uh, uh, um, question mark directly into his forehead, uh, carved into his forehead. So, I I personally that that version I wouldn't really like because I want to just see more of. Paul Dano's Riddler specifically not see him, you know, transition to, you know, just all of a sudden now becoming hush and, you know, Riddler's mostly dead. I want to see more of the Riddler. I don't want to see uh, Paul Dano not play hush because also at the same time, um, I feel like it would be um, delving off the same thing, except, you know, being the same character. And, you know, uh, I, I'd like to see more of his Riddler than him transition to a new character like hush. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, if I was making a choice, I would see like them to do Tommy Elliott. I think, I think for, for me, I agree with you. I want to see more Paul Dano Riddler, but if they were to pull off him being hush, I would do that in a third movie, like towards the end. So yeah. like maybe, maybe you get, you use the Riddler in the second one and then Riddler kind of goes away and you're like, well, Riddler's done. They're like, Riddler's not coming back. And then hush is your villain. That's just. If they were to do that, that's how I think it would play out better, but uh, maybe not. Who knows? I'm with you, though. Maybe just stick to the source material on a few things and, and let that be that. But I love that Reeves is, you know, he, he clearly knows, he clearly loves Batman. He clearly loves this world, the lore within it, and the storylines of it. And the cast does as well. If anyone's seen any of the interviews, the cast is all about this stuff. One final thing, Rob, before we go, though, is the Court of Owls. Everybody wants the Court of Owls. Uh, I'm reading the Court of Owls book right now. It's really good. But the Court of Owls is something everybody wants. I'm not sure after watching this. Um, how I think it would fit in, but I don't know if it would take away. I'm not. I'm very conflicted on how I feel about the Court of Owls appearing in the Reeves vs. Batman. Like, does it add to what's going on? Or does it take away from the little little nuggets that we've gotten so far? I mean, I I, I think it could. Like, I, 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 I'm kind of like, you know, under the same guys, which that you're saying right now, it's like, does it take away right now? That's why it's like, maybe if they were to decide to do the quarter rallies, maybe that's a better idea for something like the third movie. And it's like, you know, you add a couple more nuggets of, of stuff in it, in the second one. And uh, in, in the, in the next movie, um, like, like even a, in a show like Arkham, right? Like they could, they could literally start putting the seeds down uh, for um, uh, the court of owls there. And it's just, just like court, court of Owls is such a great tool that they could use, especially if they want to really make Gotham a character and really delving even deeper than the in the corruption yeah. of Gotham and the corruption of Gotham for years and years and years, tens of tens of years uh, uh, in the case of the uh, court of owls. So it's, that's one that I would be very much excited to do. And one that, you know, when you're talking about, um, someone like like Ra's al Ghul and Scarecrow, like char characters that um, uh, the, the general public doesn't seem to be very um, familiar with. The Court of Owls is a very, you know, very much a newer storyline as well that introduced characters that I think are starting to become mainstays of uh, Batman's rogue, rogues gallery. And, you know, it's just a, a great book uh, written by, I believe, uh, Scott Snyder. Um, yeah, just I, I'd love to see them, but maybe, maybe the second movie is too early. Yeah, maybe you're right. I love the idea though that Gotham has just been corrupt forever and ever and ever. When we get there, and it is a fascinating story, a really fun read. If you haven't read it, you got to check that one out. Everybody wants them. I, I think because it's on the forefront of everybody's minds, I don't think they're going to go right into it. And I'm fine with them. I'm, wait, wait for, wait for the third movie. Surprise us. Kind of like lead us down a path that we think, oh, they're never going to show up. And then all of a sudden just smack us over the head with the Court of Owls. They would be super creepy to see on screen as well. And they would fit perfectly, I think, in mm -hmm. the Reeves verse. Yeah, I agree. Like, uh, yeah, the, the reanimated corpses might be a, like a thing that he might not be ready for immediately. But again, he can adapt that and make it, you know, not necessarily animated corpses. He can make it something else. Or keep it uh, reanimated corpses. Uh, Maddie, keep it what it is. All right, Rob, let's <laughs> wrap it up right there. Thanks so much for talking Batman again today. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you. 
yeah, you can find me at Robert E. McDonald on Instagram and Twitter and uh, yeah, on uh, Letterboxd. If you want to uh, see some of my rankings and, you know, ratings for movies and stuff like that, I don't quite necessarily have it as a uh, 9.6 versus 9.5 when we're talking about uh, the Batman and the Dark Knight. But, you know, uh, I, I still love both movies and you can see some, uh, yeah, some other ratings for some of my other stuff. That's uh, Night, Nightwing with a uh, six instead of a G. It's hard to rank uh, 9.6 or 9.5 on Letterbox when it's out of five. But, you know, you do yes. what you can when you make it. Uh, but check them out on Letterbox. Uh, I'm there, too, but you don't have to look at me. I, I don't really go on there often. But uh, thanks, Rob, so much for talking and talking Batman. We'll have to have you on again soon to talk more stuff. And until next time, everybody, may you be the master of your own universe. <laughs>